hello again and uh, welcome to a slightly different video to the two that I've already done. This video uh, is actually going to be a bit of a robot tutorial for people who might not necessarily, you know, who might have got into the game without uh, being particularly familiar with real life uh, robot combat or just might be struggling to get to grips with uh, the robot builder and uh, yeah the um basically the idea with this what's going to be a bit of, bit of a small series is to build a very simple robot in this video and then sort of make it steadily more complicated in future videos to, uh, to to introduce more of the features of the game I'm gonna do just a standard square and uh, then draw that square back at the front into a wedge whether that that uh, green milling machine is always the front of the uh, bot lab drop this down a bit and pull the back end in just a little bit for uh, well, mostly just for the sake of aesthetics. Oh, and uh, I forgot to actually mention what I was doing there. So, um, in case you uh, weren't quite... Uh, in case there's things that you haven't quite noticed here, these things, of course, drag bits of the robot shape around if you try and drag them three through each other that doesn't work <laughs> okay the game gets very unhappy with you but you can make ludicrous shapes like that if you so wish and uh, yeah, the the um this square that you're working in here is 1 meter by 1 meter the uh well, that's also the uh, units that the height thing down there is working in. So, uh, yeah, so, so this is a 14 centimetre tall wedge. Then, when you get onto here, this is just a case of the game sometimes struggles to uh, generate a decent uh, uh, collision mesh for the shape that you've created and so it gives you four options to pick the best one. You know, in this case it doesn't really matter which one I pick because all of them uh, work you know, really well because this robot only has six sides. And then uh, well, we're building the absolute simplest robot that you could possibly build. So that means we just need to start off with a motor. Going th this uh, arrow here uh, brings out a uh, little screen where you can see the uh, exact numbers for. Uh, the various axes and such that you're rotating things or moving things around in. So if I drag it on the Z on the blue here, the Z axis changes. The red is the X axis and the green is the Y axis. So we want to stick that motor on its side. And we want to stick a wheel on it 
that sticks a bit further out of the bottom of the robot than that does. We could move the motor down, but this way the robot uh, will still work if it gets flipped upside down as well. The wheel sticks out of the top too. I'm actually going to move that a little further back just so that it looks nicer. And uh, then if I click on that I can go to this little button here with the two squares and the two squares. So the, these two buttons are the copy buttons. The one square to one square is copy the individual thing I've clicked on, in this case the motor. Two squares to two squares is the thing I've clicked on plus anything that's attached to it. So then get that and then this is where the numbers are most useful because you can look at them while checking the two uh, <laughs> motors or whatever else to make sure that they are actually symmetrical. And so here we have the minimum that you could possibly build to have it be able to be driven in Robot Rumble 2. You just go to the controls, it gets a bit weird, it depends on which way you've attached the things. The way these motors are attached and the way that I usually end up with things to do drive you need to uh, tell the motor on the left to be left drive but then reverse it and do the same with right drive for the one on the right it's I'm not quite sure what's going on there but then if we go into the test area it is a little bit light something about uh, the fact that it isn't made of metal yet but uh, it can it can be operated just about Yeah, it is capable of travelling around the test area. But then, well, in later builds of the game, it will actually be important to have things like power and speed controllers. So, should probably stick some of that in. It's going to stuff two batteries in there. Okay, they're not quite fitting without clipping through things, so yeah, move them forward. <laughs> and lift them up slightly just so that they're a little further away from the floor. And then we want the electronics, we want a speed controller. We want a radio control receiver. Put that nice and close to the top, just because it, it seems like a good place. I'm not exact. I'm not certain exactly where you want to <laughs> stick them on your real-life combat robot nowadays, but I tend to put it near the top. Get the master switch in. Okay, that isn't quite. Uh, so all of these components, the batteries, the electronics, all of this isn't actually necessary yet, but it's good practice to get into the habit of putting it in the robot, uh, because in future they will be necessary. And, uh, you know, <laughs> when that happens you want to, you know, already... Uh, be accustomed to fitting them into your robot so that you don't build all of your robots too small and not be able to make room for them. So uh, now the last thing that we need to do for this robot, or well for this version of the robot, is just make everything in the material, go to the material section and make everything into metal so that it's actually a bit tougher. And then we can, on the individual sides, make 
make things a bit tougher on the front set of wedge areas and on the sides of the robot to make it a bit less vulnerable to attack. And we are at 107 and some yeah, kilos, which is the maximum weight for the heavyweight class. So we now have a working robot. One thing that you may notice though is uh, oh, if I stop it right here it does get a little bit bouncy on the floor and, and uh, you know, drags around a bit <laughs> the uh, yeah, it's not too bad but uh, it can just sometimes be an issue but uh, Well, it's something to bear in mind. There are ways to counter it, but those are kind of outside the scope of this initial just basic wedge bot video. I'll uh, do those in one of the future videos. For now, we're about done. Just going to uh, head into battle to uh, d just to prove that it is you know, a robot that can do things and then we'll be about good robot is three, two, one, commence. the drama so tense and then the wedge with some wheels in it proceeds to immediately just have complete control over the fight. See, this is why I'm demonstrating the uh, really simple, uh, basic starter robot with a wedge. Oh, oh, oh! I've been eaten by the. I've been eaten by physics. This is not good. <laughs> eh. No, I couldn't. I couldn't shake it loose after physics ate me. Yeah, that happens sometimes. The pit is a bit buggy. But, uh... Oh, oh. We're going to battle with one more robot. And try to avoid the pit. Just because, uh... Well, well yeah, I went to the trouble of making this basic starter bot a uh, uh, robot that can run upside down. I might as well show you that. C come on, flip me over. <laughs> I said over, not back the right way up. How bad are you <laughs> flipping me over? Siri. <laughs> I come here looking to get myself flipped over so that I can demonstrate something cool about my robot and... <laughs> okay, okay, no. <laughs> Alright, I'll do the flipping. <laughs> and the AI can drive uh, the learning curve. <laughs> and show uh, that it's capable of moving around after it's been flipped. Ow. Uh, eh. Go. <laughs> Which is somewhat difficult because I'm having to deal with the AI trying to keep its front to me, where the AI that couldn't manage to uh, flip me and leave me uh, had an opponent that was specifically trying to give them its back end, but y you can see now it is uh, overturned and still capable of driving around effectively and still being an absolute nightmare to try and get under me because seriously wedges are just the business. <laughs> uh. 
and uh, now I'll just get this fight finished. I stopped there because the AI was about to drive itself into the pit, and I want this fight to at least not just end by purely AI stupidity. Yeah, c get it. Ow. <laughs> yes, I've got him. I've eaten him. Nom. Nom him to death. <laughs> ah! No, I wasn't fast enough. Okay, now, now I've... Now I... Well, well, I have him lifted, but the... Well, here's the thing. <laughs> All I can really do is just try to... <laughs> yeah, I, it's really, really hard to try and get a robot like this into the pit because there's nothing to really hold on to it with. Ow. <laughs> Something is happening with the physics. The universe is not happy with me right now, probably because I'm driving Manta. <laughs> It has a tendency to wildly explode. We're lucky that it hasn't vanished into the ether at any point when I've tried to flip the learning curve. <laughs> it yes, I've eaten him. No, no. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. No! no! <laughs> okay. Okay, so if I don't move at all, except for making sure I face him, then I can get him onto my front. <laughs> At least I can escape when he gets underneath me, but he's doing damage to me just by hitting me with his front edge. <laughs> I've accidentally made... To, yeah, I've accidentally made a really hard robot to fight. <laughs> just for the basic tutorial bot. <laughs> No, no, no. Come on. Eh. Ah! Biddy. Did not have been caught on the wall. No! <laughs> He's escaped again! Now I'm in trouble. Okay, I survived that time, but self writing is the time when Manta is most likely to just explode into nothingness. <laughs> Up! The AI messed up! Get into the pit! <laughs> so, um, that was uh, probably a better demonstration than I could have come up with uh, on, with me driving of why you should never underestimate a wedge. And also, a very basic starter robot as uh, just sort of a brief introduction to uh, the basics of the Bot Lab, and then in later videos I shall add things to it, such as uh, spinning weapons and flippers and what have you, which will involve you know, ma ma making the armour somewhat lighter, so it'll probably actually get more flimsy and less effective, but... <laughs> well, well, the... That, that, that's what happens sometimes. Sometimes just a plain wedge is the way to go. Anyway, uh, goodbye.